Polygenic scores are increasingly being used as an index of individual genetic liability to autism or ASD, and they measure the cumulative genetic loads for ASD at an individual level, allowing the investigation of the genetic link between liability to ASD and a particular phenotype, which in our case is uh, just brain structure, subcortical brain volumes. And the advantage of such method compared to classic GWAS or genome-wide association studies is that it investigates also the known genome-wide significant component of the genetic signal. ASDs are highly polygenic disorders, so uh, even the SNPs or uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms that are known significantly associated to the phenotype from GWAS analysis are likely to contribute to the disorder and therefore making computations like polygenic scores is extremely valuable to improve our understanding of the genetic basis of disorders like ASD. But uh, without these polygenic scores, we're just the sum of uh, risk alleles in a target sample weighted by the estimated effect size as determined in an independent GWAS sample, the discovery sample. So basically you start with a discovery sample, a GWAS analysis that has been already performed with uh, possibly uh, the same um, outcome variable, the same uh, phenotype, and you get the summary statistics uh, for that analysis. And then you have a target sample, your sample of interest, your GWAS, um, uh, the one you want to compute genetic scores from. So you tend to match the two samples, so the more similar they are, the more similar they are, and the best it is. Um, but you can even use different uh, phenotypes or sub uh, disorders and so on. And then uh, what you do is just to limit the SNP list to those uh, with association p-values less than a specific threshold, and you tend to choose different thresholds. And then you generate the genomic profile scores in the target sample. And these profile scores are just the sum of risk alleles weighted by the effect size from the discovery sample. And then you perform a regression analysis to see whether these profile scores predict phenotypes significantly. And you compare the variance explained by this model to the, uh, the one only with covariates, so the reduced model. You compare the full model with reduced model, and you choose the best, the optimized threshold um, to have the model that explains most of the variance. So you select the optimal model. And once you've done so, you can compute uh, the genomic profile scores for the final ones for your target sample. And so you, you have for each individual a score that is at the these, uh, weighted sum of um, SNPs weighted by the significance in the independent GWAS. So that's a measure of the genetic liability to the disorder, to the phenotype of interest. And that's what we did in our study using a, a discovery sample in which GWAS analysis has been performed on the um, ASD phenotype. And we used that to weight our uh, G was results on this target sample to obtain the polygenic scores for autism. And our aim is then to uh, investigate the association between these polygenic scores for autism and uh, the brain phenotype. So that's the second step. We have the polygenic scores for ASD in which the phenotype is autism. And then we want to examine the association to the brain phenotype, the subcortical brain.